welcome to the 2020 Alberta Literary Awards. I'm Jason Norman, Programs and Events Coordinator at the Writers Guild of Alberta. The COVID-19 global pandemic has affected every aspect of daily life in our society for the past few months. The literary community in Alberta has not been sheltered from such disruptions. There have been cancellations for readings, performances, book launches, panels, guest speakers, and award celebrations too. The WGA has tried its best to pivot and move more of our programming online while making plans for the events and celebrations that will take place when we are all able to gather in person to celebrate writers and literature in Alberta again. This video awards presentation is something we have never tried before, but we hope that many of our members and writers and their families across Alberta are all watching us together as we honour the achievements of our finalists. Our presentation this evening will include literary awards in eight categories. We want to honour the writers in our province who create novels, plays, children's books, non-fiction books, essays, short stories, and poetry. We will also be presenting this, the Robert Croach City of Edmonton Book Prize and the Golden Pen Award. Please enjoy the video presentation. The Alberta Literary Awards were created by the Writers Guild of Alberta in 1982 to recognize excellence in writing by Alberta authors. In this award season, the WGA office received more than 200 submissions to the Literary Awards this year. This high number of entries suggests that the literary community in Alberta is vibrant, prolific, and hard at work. From those submissions, jurors have selected awards recipients in five book categories. Children's Literature, Chapter Book, Fiction, Nonfiction, Drama, Poetry, and three shorter writing categories short nonfiction, short story, unpublished essay. This year's finalists represent writers of diverse cultural backgrounds, career paths, experiences, and ages. I want to acknowledge that we are located on treaty territory and we respect the histories, languages, and cultures of First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and all First Peoples of Canada, whose presence continues to enrich our vibrant community. Before we present the awards, we must extend our sincere appreciation to the following sponsors and donors who have provided support for this awards program. Our gala and award sponsors and donors are Alberta Views, the Alexandra Writer Center, Stefan V. Benedictson, Under the Arch Youth Foundation at the Calgary Foundation, Aretha Van Herk, the Writers Guild of Alberta Board of Directors, as well, the following organizations provide ongoing funding to the Writers Guild of Alberta, and we are grateful to them. Canada Council for the Arts, the City of Calgary, the City of Edmonton, the Edmonton Arts Council, Calgary Arts Development, Alberta Foundation for the Arts, Alberta Culture. Thank you to all of our award sponsors, donors, and supporters. We also acknowledge the support and cooperation of our friends at Audrey's Books, who are also sponsors of the Robert Croach City of Edmonton Book Prize. We also extend a special thank you to this year's jury panels. They read a lot of material and made the tough decisions. Most categories had over 30 entries. So thanks very much to them. Our first Writers Guild of Alberta Literary Award was named in honor of children's author Ronald Ross Annette. R. Ross Annette lived in Alberta and worked as a teacher during the 1920s. He published over 70 stories in the Saturday Evening Post between 1938 and 1970. This award was established in 1982 and is presented annually for excellence in writing by Alberta Writers for Children. The award is sponsored by the Under the Arch Youth Foundation, supported by the Calgary Foundation. This award alternates between picture books and chapter books. And this year, we have three exceptional chapter books. The finalists and jury comments are... Natasha Dean, In the Key of Niragani, Running Press Kids. Niragani's authentically charming voice sweeps the reader into a story of passion, friendship, and complex family dynamics, moving the reader through an array of emotions in a way that seems effortless, but can only be done through meaningful, careful writing. The author carries us equally strongly through laughter and tears. A beautiful, engaging story told with a great deal of heart. 
Sue Farrell Haller, Cold White Sun, Groundwood Books. Cold Winter Sun is purposefully spare, yet wonderfully vivid. The language of this book brings to life the settings, characters, and emotions of a young protagonist's life from political upheaval in Ethiopia through abandonment at a wintry Calgary bus station and into the struggles of making his way without guidance in an unfamiliar world. The writing is vivid, often raw, and the protagonist's story lingers far after the final page. Danielle L. Jensen, Dark Shores, Tortine. Dark Shores is full of action and suspense, with characters that are strong and varied. Complex questions of power, loyalty, family, citizenship and love are explored all within a swiftly moving plot. This is an excellent read with fantastic language, world building, storytelling, action, and jurors love the bit of romance, a wonderful blend which will engage teen readers. Congratulations to Sue Farrell Haller for her winning book, Cold White Sun. Our next presentation is the James H. Gray Award for Short Nonfiction. This award is presented for an outstanding literary short nonfiction piece written by an Alberta author and published in a magazine, newspaper, or anthology. This award was established in honor of Dr. James H. Gray, who wrote more than a dozen books that profiled Western Canadian experiences and history. James H. Gray was inducted into the Alberta Order of Excellence in 1987, and the Order of Canada in 1988. This year, our finalists and jury comments are Paolo da Costa, Learning to Shave, Learning to Leave, The Fiddlehead. This poetic essay explores the richness of a father-son relationship in language that is tender, emotionally vibrant, and physically sensual. A lyric antidote to toxic masculinity, this beautifully crafted and fully realized essay results in something much larger than a simple combination of its carefully worded parts. It's a lovely examination of fatherhood and what is passed down through generations and how different generations express love. Jennifer Bowering Delisle, Abracadabra, The Forge. Smart, critically on point and innovative, this brisk essay works language in ways that are simultaneously heartbreaking and giggle-making. Feminist and self-reflective, poetic and illuminative. In this witty, smart and heart-rending exploration of the emotional turmoil of infertility, the author combines keen social commentary with brutal self-awareness. The essay is raw while never lapsing into self-pity. Its creative structure links ancient solutions to the longing for a child with the very modern solutions offered by technology and online support communities, creating a rich sense of the historical continuity of this far-reaching female experience. Omar Moalam, Billionaires, Bombers and Belly Dancers, The Ringer. In this impressively researched and powerful essay, the author takes us through a landscape of historical events that force us to confront the biases and constraints that have distorted the lives of many people who belong to radicalized minorities. Impeccably researched and inescapably fascinating, this is an essay for anyone interested in the sly ways race, identity, and culture are shaped by Hollywood's discourse-making machine. A read that will have you Googling the face of a man you've likely never heard of, but who has certainly influenced how you interact with movies. Congratulations to Paolo da Costa for his winning story, Learning to Shave, Learning to Leave. The Howard O'Hagan Award for Short Story was established in honor of accomplished short story writer Howard O'Hagan. Known as a mountain guide and wilderness explorer, as well as a writer, O'Hagan authored two novels and two collections of short stories. This year's award is sponsored by the Alexandra Writers' Centre Society. This year's three finalists and jury comments are... Allie Bryan, The Big Man in Cargo Shorts, Alberta Views. 
Ali Bryan captures the rhythms of children's thought and speech, the memorable details of school life, and the class dynamics that exist even among elementary age students. It's a challenge for any writer to depict the voices and private interactions of children without coming off as twee or sentimental. This story does so expertly, using a strange encounter to tenderly explore and depict the idiosyncratic reactions and observations of a group of kids. As they discuss the big man who's passed out on their playground, their interactions reveal the class system they live in, their limited expectations, and their kindness. The ending is perfect. Tyler Hine, Don't Finish, Funicular Magazine. A story that explores the fluidity of sexual desire, this narrative of confusion and secrecy is full of depth and emotional surprise. Hines' work is a tightly written internal drama that takes us into the private moment between two office workers. From its wonderful first line all the way to the last, this story is honest, raw, and psychologically astute. Hine has a straightforward voice that challenges the reader with blunt shame and sexual honesty. A strong emotional undercurrent pushes the story forward. Joelle Timchuk, Lastborn, The Fiddlehead. With an incredible mix of high diction and quotidian detail, Timchuk takes us behind the sushi counter into the minds and hearts of those who work in the restaurant's kitchen. The story moves gracefully between the past and the present, illuminating the struggle for identity, connection, and freedom in the lives of one immigrant family. An expansive story showing the reader the narrator's childhood and young adulthood in a Japanese-Canadian family where tradition weighs heavily and belonging is inseparable from the emotional toll of conforming to cultural roles. Congratulations to Allie Bryan for her winning story, The Big Man in Cargo Shorts. The Writers Guild's Award for Poetry was established in honor of Stephen G. Stephenson, who emigrated to Alberta in 1889. Stephenson was considered the voice of the Icelandic immigrant community, and his poetry expressed the loneliness felt by many living in the new country. Stefan Benedictson's commitment to this province's artists, and in particular poets, is remarkable. We are always so grateful for his support. The 2020 finalists and jury comments are... Billy Ray Belcourt, Indian Coping Mechanisms, House of Anansi Press. A tour de force, a feat of strength, Belcourt interrogates intimacy, kinship, and Canadian identity through docu-poetics and an inimitable lyric voice that turns history on itself. This collection is about recognition, who sees and who is being seen, who causes violence and who experiences it. These poems are about the different kinds of death, yes, also about staying alive, the dance between signifier and signified, how to exist in a world that wants to symbolize your presence or kill you. Indian Coping Mechanisms is a generosity of language, the writing vibrant. Monica Kidd, Chance Encounters with Wild Animals, Gaspero Press. A breathtaking collection of poetry that breaks us open to the harsh and generous grandeur of life. Monica Kidd's work is seemingly fashioned out of the slow hours of silence, where the passage of ordinary and extraordinary time combine. Monica Kidd's writing is spare, the white space generous. I was entranced on my first read and my appreciation has only increased as I have reread and read again. Peter Midgley, Let Us Not Think of Them as Barbarians, New West Press. Let Us Not Think of Them as Barbarians is uncomfortable without being exploitative a reawakening of old violence and the brutality of colonialism, but it does not forget the beauty that exists in spite of destructive forces. Midgley takes tireless risks in writing these polyphonic persona poems that speak of the role of women and women's bodies in resistance, acknowledging that their stories gain power through retelling. Let Us Not Think of Them as Barbarians is a book of poems that teaches us how to listen to ways of life that are not ours, to a history of genocide which resounds even now 
even in Canada, and to listen to kinship with the earth, with others, with our bodies. The narrative arc is a tender love story that highlights resilience and resistance. Congratulations to Billy Ray Belcourt for his winning book, Indian Coping Mechanisms. Our next award is the John White Memorial Essay Award. This award is presented to an Alberta author for a short, unpublished piece of nonfiction. John White was a respected writer, historian, and supporter of the arts in Alberta. He was the curator of Banff Heritage Homes, a foundation agency of the White Museum of the Canadian Rockies in Banff. A poet, columnist, writer, and filmmaker, John wrote several books and contributed to many anthologies, magazines, and other media. This category, the John White Memorial Essay Award, offers a prize for unpublished work. We believe that this supports both emerging writers and established writers who have ventured into new territory or taken on a new writing challenge. This award also employs a blind judging process. While the jurors are deliberating over the essays, they do not know the writer's identities. The Writers Guild of Alberta Board of Directors is a proud sponsor of this award. This year, our three finalists and jury comments are Jennifer Bowring Delisle, Premature Burial. Premature Burial is an impactful, riveting essay that succeeds in placing the reader in the scene, recreating the author's phobia through terrifying and vivid passages. As a daughter wrestles with her claustrophobia and her mother's debilitating disease, she explores the boundaries of fear between what is imagined and what is real. This story excels in building tension until its powerful conclusion. Rayanne Haynes, This is Normal. In short sentences and well-placed refrains that mirror the narrator's recurring sense of emergency, This is Normal conveys the shock grief, and agony of a parent learning to cope with the ongoing after-effects of a serious concussion in her son, a poignant rendering of the catastrophic effects of concussion and one family's rocky journey to recovery, a taut, powerful read. Julie Sedevi, Telescoping. A vivid and penetrating meditation on the way we experience life, loved ones, death, and time, with its distinctive point of view, its seamless incorporation of a wide range of sources, its apparently rambling yet carefully chosen structure, and its thoughtful meditations on aging, time, and mortality, telescoping offers all the considerable pleasures of a classic personal essay. It is graceful, poetic, and truly a pleasure to read. Congratulations to Julie Sedevi for her essay, Telescoping. The Drama Award was established in honor of Gwen Ferris Ringwood, whose first published play, Still Stands the House, was the most performed one-act play in Canadian theatre. Ringwood was awarded the Governor General's Medal for Outstanding Service in the Development of Canadian Drama. The award is sponsored by Alberta Views, and we thank them for their support. The three finalists and jury comments for the 2020 Gwen Ferris Ringwood Award are Tara Began, Honor Beat. Tara Began is a force to be reckoned with within Canadian theatre. Honor Beat is a powerful, tender, and deeply compassionate journey through love, loss, and the power of family. The power of forgiveness, redemption, and resilience is beautifully rendered in Honor Beat. A deeply humane story of identity and family, Begin's emotional and intellectual generosity leads the audience to growing our own capacity for forgiveness and care. Elena Ballier, Smoke. A shattering and forceful drama that demands audiences reckon with deeply complex and complicated questions. Gender, sexual assault, and relationship are stripped bare by Ballier and her incredible capacity for language, and audiences are the luckier for it. Smoke is one of the rare plays that brings urgency, heart, fully realized characters, nuanced insights into complex questions, and pure theatricality. 
Valier whips the characters from rage to regret to desire and back to rage with such nimbleness, you can't imagine what these characters will say or do next, and you can't wait to witness it. Christopher Duthie, A Dinner Party Calgary theater critic Louis B. Hobson compared Duthie's work to Edward Albee, and one has to wonder if there is a greater compliment for a young playwright. A Dinner Party is a sharp and hilarious script that takes us on a wild ride through shared jokes, a hard-won cynicism, and demands us to ask questions about our relationship with optimism and friendship. A Dinner Party captures the absurdity of our contemporary moment and revels in it. Duffy is a hopeful and hilarious voice with enough edge to keep us coming back for more. Congratulations to this year's Drama Award, Tara Bagan and her play, Honor Beat. The Wilfred Eggleston Award for Nonfiction Book was established in honor of Professor Wilfred Eggleston, who headed the School of Journalism at Carleton University and was awarded the Order of the Empire in 1943. In addition to his career as a journalist, Eggleston published several nonfiction works, including his 1980 memoir, Literary Friends. Before World War II, Eggleston worked as a journalist for the Toronto Star and Time magazine. He wrote 16 books on Canadian history and politics. This year's finalists and jury comments are Richard Kemick, I Am Herod, Goose Lane Editions. A delightfully funny page turner, I Am Herod contains many gems of the quirky clash of cultures among people inhabiting urban and rural spaces and on the atheist religious spectrum in a rollicking personal narrative. The story of the interrogation of faith, a working through of depression, and a look of what compassion means in this type of setting feels refreshingly new. The book looks at belief, how we understand those who are unlike us, how in spite of our differences, we can still coexist, and how we navigate truth and lies amid the circus and spectacle of everyday life. Naomi K. Lewis, Tiny Lights for Travelers, University of Alberta Press. This book is a powerful meditation of identity in a travel memoir. Naomi Lewis upends the conventions of travelogue and quest narratives in her frank and vulnerable book. Her lack of confidence, her anxieties, her lack of a sense of direction, and her unruly, uncooperative body are woven with the story of her grandparents, a lost diary, the loss of memory, and the interrogation of Jewish identity. The longer one sits with the book, the more layers are revealed. Sharon Wood, Rising becoming the first Canadian woman to summon Everest, Douglas and McIntyre. A smoothly written account of an incredible true story, an inspiring story told with disarming humility and thoughtfulness. If it were just the story of how Wood became the first woman from the Americas to summit Everest, the reader might be satisfied. But because the narrative is told through the lens of experience, there is a richness to her retelling and a questioning that is compelling, insightful, and hauntingly truthful. Congratulations to Naomi K. Lewis for her book, Tiny Lights for Travelers. The Alberta Literary Award for Fiction Book was established in honor of novelist George Bounier, who emigrated to Alberta in 1905. He was a botanist, researcher, and writer. Bounier wrote novels, poetry, stories, essays, articles, diaries, and plays. At the age of 100, he was awarded an honorary doctorate from the University of Alberta. The finalists and jury comments in this category are Sharon Butala, Season of Fury and Wonder, Koto Books. This collection is a gift of wisdom from a long-standing writer to the reading public. The stories are an inspiration to established and emerging writers in their connection to classic works of literature, confirming Batala as one of Canada's great authors. This short story collection is both brilliant and gorgeous, even as it traverses difficult, scary, and yes, even sometimes ugly terrain. A magnificent and important work. Marina Endicott, The Difference, 
not for Canada, Penguin Random House. A luminous novel that explores colonialism as it occurred in Canada and the Antipodes, all the while offering a cracking good yarn. The characters, so real they feel like relatives, stay with the reader long after the novel is finished. This novel lights up the literary mind, creating a world where readers experience a range of emotional and moral vicissitudes within the rich, vast, and global reach of the imagination. This is proof that the novel still does what it is meant to do, enlighten, engage, entertain, and shine a light into corners hitherto unexplored. Richard Van Camp, Moccasin Square Gardens, Douglas and McIntyre. A collection of stories that is by turns funny and sorrowful, but always charming. This latest collection of stories reaffirms Van Camp's growth into a consummate writer of short fiction. The stories are fun and accessible on the surface, yet deeply layered and complex in their aesthetic structure. Van Camp is a master of equally balancing the comic, the tragic, the speculative, the fantastic, and the real in this sublime short story collection. This collection is enthralling, exciting, and wholly original. This is a vital book. Congratulations to Richard Van Camp for his winning book, Moccasin Square Gardens. The Robert Croach City of Edmonton Book Prize was established by Edmonton City Council in 1995 and is administered by the Writers Guild of Alberta. The prize was renamed in 2011 after the late Robert Croach, who was best known for his Governor General Award winning novel, The Stud Horse Man. Entries are judged by an independent jury recruited by the Writers Guild of Alberta. The winning author will receive $10,000 cash prize. Audrey's Books is pleased to support this award in cooperation with the Edmonton Arts Council. This year there were 36 entries for consideration for this award. We thank the independent jury for its hard work in putting forward its three finalists of three amazing books. The three finalists and jury comments are The Difference, Marina Endicott, Not for Canada, Penguin Random House. A mesmerizing nautical travelogue and a coming of age story full of realistic and yet magical landscapes and seascapes. This is what Heart of Darkness might look like if it were told by and about young women. With lush language, vivid imagery, and deliberate pacing, the reader is deeply immersed with the sounds, sights, and smells of a lost time. In this world of fast news, fast reads, fast travel, fast everything, here we are required to slow our breath to be in rhythm with the slap, slap of the waves and the emptiness and bounty of the ocean. This is a beautiful, wondrous book that feels like it was written in a long ago era, yet it is entirely new and fresh. It examines questions about forgiveness and atonement that resonate deeply today. The Death of Annie the Water Witcher by Lightning, Audrey Whitson, New West Press. In The Death of Annie the Water Witcher, Audrey Whitson takes us into the inner heart of a town struggling to save itself. This is a book of fascinating juxtapositions. The mysterious and magical is overlaid with the everyday concerns of crop prices and back pain. Rumors and innuendos are overlaid with private truths coming into the light. The town's future is overlaid with regrets of the past. Annie's presence in death is as real as if she were standing right there, as if she held within her the power to save lives. The writing is lyrical and engaging and so filled with heart. Indian Coping Mechanisms Billy Ray Belcourt, House of Anansi. A clear-eyed, well-deserved indictment of the systemic racism inherent in Canada's political and social structures. Using anger and accusation to haunting effect, Indian Coping Mechanisms, Notes from the Field, explores the devastating consequences of relying on an anthropological lens for our understanding of Indigenous people. Formally innovative, alternating between lyric and conceptual poetics, and juxtaposing popular culture with post-colonial scholarship and queer theory, this collection looks without flinching at pain, loss, and seemingly impossible hope. The winner of the Robert Crouch City of Edmonton Book Prize is... 
The Difference by Marina Endicott. The City of Calgary established the W.O. Mitchell Book Prize in honor of the late Calgary writer W.O. Mitchell to celebrate literary achievements by Calgary authors. The book prize is organized in partnership with the Writers Guild of Alberta. Congratulations to the 2019 finalists. Sharon Batala for Season of Fury and Wonder, published by Koto Books and Freehand Books. Naomi K. Lewis for Tiny Lights for Travelers published by the University of Alberta Press. And Teresa Wong for Dear Scarlet, the story of my postpartum depression, published by Arsenal Pulp Press. The W.O. Mitchell Book Prize recipient will be announced at the council meeting on Wednesday, June 15th, 9.30 a.m. at calgary.ca slash calgaryawards, along with the full list of Calgary Awards recipients. The Writers Guild of Alberta Golden Pen Award is intended to acknowledge our Alberta writers who have produced a distinguished body of work over a long-standing career and have made a major contribution to the Alberta writing landscape. Past recipients have been Greg Hollingshead, Alice Major, George Melnick, Fred Stenson, Aretha Van Herk, Robert Croach, Myrna Summers, Grant McEwen, W.O. Mitchell, Candace Jane Dorsey, Rudy Weeb, and Bob Stallworthy. This award is supported by Aretha Van Herk. The 2020 Golden Pen Award is presented to Vivian Hansen. In 1988, Vivian co founded the Calgary Women's Writing Project, a nonprofit society at the University of Calgary that promoted opportunities for women to develop writing and other communication skills. Under her stewardship and over its 14-year run, the project's Forum magazine gave women on campus and beyond a place to publish and read work that focused on women's issues. Last year, a new editorial team revived the magazine and paid tribute to Vivian's critical role as founding editor. As a teacher, Vivian has also given her time both within and outside the university. She has taught erotica writing, poetry, and life writing for organizations as diverse as the University of Calgary Continuing Education, the Alexandra Writer Center Society, the Airdrie Over 50 Club, and the League of Canadian Poets. She has served as a mentor in the WGA's mentorship program. Vivian teaches creative writing with Mount Royal University, the University of Calgary, the Alexandra Writer Center. Vivian Hansen has published poetry, essays, and memoir in Canadian journals and anthologies. She has four poetry books, including Ley Lines of My Flesh, A Bitter Mood of Clouds, and A Tincture of Sunlight. She has work forthcoming in the New Quarterly and Prairie Journal. Vivian is currently writer-in-residence with the Canadian Authors Association, Alberta Branch. Her nomination letters proclaim, As a writer, Vivian is brave and versatile. Her work is informed by compassion, acute awareness of history, deep understanding of psychological pain, exploration of levels of consciousness, and respect for resilience. We must value people like Vivian, both in our profession and personally. She approaches every adventure with enthusiasm. She gives herself to every project. We all feel better knowing Vivian is involved. Alberta writers owe Vivian Hansen a debt of gratitude for her tireless, steady contribution in building a vibrant and inclusive literary community in our province. The WGA is very proud to present the 2020 Golden Pen Award to Vivian Hansen. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to the WGA staff, particularly our Executive Director Carol Holmes, also Georgia Severini, Ellen Kartz, Mike McGuire, and Samantha Ward. We work as a team to make these events happen. Thank you to Real Story Communications for bringing this event to life. On behalf of the Writers Guild of Alberta, thank you for your support of Alberta writers and literature during this period of self-isolation and uncertainty. Have a good night, and we hope to see you in person soon.